Think about the last time you were caught in a rainstorm, the sound of millions of drops drumming against the roof. Now, what if I told you that every single raindrop holds a secret, a secret source of power that scientists are just now beginning to unlock? This isn't fiction in a lab, a single water drop falling just 15 centimeters generated enough voltage to light up 100 LEDs. This incredible potential isn't about just one drop, but about the colossal amount of energy falling all over our planet every day. For centuries, we've harnessed the power of water on a massive scale. Hydroelectric dams have powered our cities by capturing the energy of entire rivers. But these giants are geographically limited and can have a huge impact on the environment. Today, a new revolution is brewing, one that thinks smaller. Scientists are no longer just looking at mighty rivers, but at the kinetic energy held within every individual raindrop. It's a decentralized source of power, available almost everywhere rain falls. The most common method to capture this energy is static electricity. It's called the triboelectric effect and it's what happens when you rub a balloon on your hair. When two different materials come into contact and then separate, one can steal electrons from the other, creating an electrical charge imbalance. Scientists have designed special devices to take advantage of this called triboelectric nanogenerators or TANGs for short. Here's how it works with rain. A droplet hits a specially designed surface, often a polymer like Teflon. The brief contact and separation between the water and the surface generates a tiny static charge which can be collected by electrodes. But how did that one drop light up 100 LEDs? Researchers at the City University of Hong Kong created a brilliant design using a structure similar to a field effect transistor or FET. Think of it like a clever switch. The device stores up charge on its surface as drops hit it. When one droplet spreads out just right, it connects two separate electrodes, closing the circuit and releasing all that stored energy in one powerful instantaneous burst. A second method relies on a different physical property discovered back in 1880. It's called the piezoelectric effect. The principle is simple. Certain materials like quartz or special ceramics generate a voltage when they are squeezed, pressed or vibrated under mechanical stress. The kinetic energy of a falling raindrop provides that exact kind of stress. When a drop strikes a piezoelectric material, the impact creates a tiny vibration that squeezes the crystal structure, producing a small pulse of electricity. Common materials used for this include a ceramic called lead zirconate titanate PZT and a more flexible polymer film known as PVDF. But the most stunning recent advancement came from a team at the National University of Singapore, led by Xiaoling So. To understand their breakthrough, you first need to know about the problem they solved, a fundamental barrier called the Debye length. For decades, scientists knew that when water flows continuously over a surface, a microscopic shield of opposite charges forms right at the interface. This shield, just nanometers thick, effectively neutralizes the surface and stops any significant amount of electricity from being generated. The team's solution was elegantly simple. Instead of a continuous stream, they designed a narrow 2 millimeter wide tube. As droplets fall inside, they merge and trap small pockets of air creating a unique pattern of separated water columns called plug flow. This is the genius of it. The air gaps between the water plugs prevent that charge killing Debye length shield from ever fully forming. This allows for a massive and continuous separation of electrical charges as the plugs slide down the tube. The results were astonishing. This new method is nearly 100,000 times more powerful than old continuous flow systems and converts over 10% of the water's gravitational potential energy directly into electricity. A small setup of just four tubes powered 12 LEDs continuously for 20 seconds. The idea of using water for power is as old as civilization itself, from ancient water wheels to the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. But the idea of generating electricity from individual droplets has a fascinating and surprisingly old ancestor. Lord Kelvin's water dropper invented in 1867. This device used a principle called electrostatic induction. This is where a charged object can influence charges in a nearby neutral object without touching it. Kelvin's device used this in a clever feedback loop. 
A tiny random charge on one side would induce an opposite charge in the falling water stream on the other side. This charge would collect in a bucket, which then amplified the induction on the first stream. This process would rapidly escalate until a high enough voltage was generated to create a literal spark, a tiny lightning bolt, all from falling water droplets. While Kelvin's device was a brilliant demonstration, the modern era truly began in 2012 when a group led by Professor Zhonglin Wang invented the triboelectric nano generator, kicking off the race to harvest energy from everyday motion. Since then, key research groups have driven the field forward. The City University of Hong Kong with their high power generator, Tsinghua University with their work on scaling up the technology, and the National University of Singapore with their revolutionary plug flow method. But innovation isn't confined to university labs. At just 15 years old, an inventor from Azerbaijan named Rehan Jamalova founded a startup called Rainergy. Her goal was to provide power to rural communities using a simple mechanical approach. Her device uses a rainwater collector to fill a tank which then releases the water through a small generator to charge a battery. Her initial prototype could produce 22 watts, enough to light up 22 LED lamps, showcasing a different grassroots path to the same goal. Now, for the reality check, for all its brilliance, this technology faces major hurdles. The biggest criticism is power output. Let's put it in perspective. In the rainiest inhabited place on Earth, a one square meter rain harvesting panel would generate about 0.138 kilowatt hours of energy per year. A standard solar panel of the same size can generate that much in less than an hour on a sunny day. And you can't just make the devices bigger. When you try to connect multiple Thing panels together, you run into a problem called unintended coupling capacitance. This essentially creates electrical interference between the panels that can actually reduce the total power output a problem researchers are now trying to solve with new array designs. Then there's the challenge of durability and lifespan. The constant friction and impact from raindrops can physically wear down the delicate surfaces of a tang, degrading its performance with time. Most lab prototypes only last for a few days or months, a far cry from the 25-year lifespan of a solar panel. Those hyper-efficient plug flow tubes could easily get clogged by algae or dust in the real world, requiring filters and constant maintenance and piezoelectric materials can suffer from fatigue, eventually cracking under the strain. Finally, we have to talk about the cost and the hidden environmental questions. While the rain itself is free, the high-tech materials are not. The current cost to produce a single watt of power this way is incredibly high compared to solar, which has seen its costs fall by 90% in the last decade. And perhaps most critically, the green label has a catch. The most common high-performance piezoelectric material, PZT, contains a large amount of lead, a toxic heavy metal that is harmful to our health and the environment. Furthermore, manufacturing these advanced ceramics both with and without lead is an energy intensive process requiring extremely high temperatures which gives them a significant carbon footprint from the start. So, given these challenges, what is the future of electricity from rain? It's likely not about powering entire cities. Instead, its most promising application is as a partner to existing technologies. The leading idea is the hybrid solar panel. Imagine a transparent tang layer placed directly on top of a solar cell. On sunny days, the solar panel works normally, but on cloudy rainy days when solar output plummets, the tang layer comes alive harvesting energy from the falling raindrops. It turns solar power's biggest weakness, bad weather, into a strength, creating a more consistent all-weather energy source. The other major future is in powering the small stuff. This technology is perfectly suited for low power applications where changing a battery is impossible or too expensive. Think of self-powered environmental sensors deep in a forest, medical implants, or the trillions of tiny devices that will make up the internet of things. Electricity from rain is a brilliant concept proven to be scientifically possible but still in its infancy it won't replace solar or wind but it doesn't have to its future lies as a clever supplement a niche problem solver and a driver for the next generation of material science that will unlock even more of the hidden energy in the world around us
Now I have a question for you. In the video, we discussed the plug flow method, which dramatically increased power generation by overcoming a key limitation of older systems. What was the name of that microscopic shield or force field that this new method cleverly bypassed? Let me know your answer in the comments below. If you found this look into the future of energy as fascinating as I did, please support the channel by subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss our next deep dive. And you can support us even more by sharing this video with a friend or by becoming a channel member for exclusive perks. Thank you for watching.